for this video, I will cover points 3, 4, 7, and 8, where we're going to learn about the process of fossilization and the formation of limestone. As we learned in the first video, it is more than the movement of water and sediments that can cause fossilization. Any animal caught in such a deluge would not be expected to leave remains. It would have been a great amount of rolling around. It would have been encountered many hard objects uh, like uprooted trees and rocks. It surely would have had been torn apart, pulverized before burial. But ignoring that, what does it take for something to be fossilized? Well, what does it take for something to be fossilized? After something dies, it does need to be buried fairly quickly. A small layer itself is good enough. If the body's not scavenged, and it has hard parts, then it is likely to be fossilized. As the soft parts decay, the, run in, the water is run in with minerals and slowly replaces the hard parts with minerals. So if all the animals were buried in the same time, and it would be logical to assume that all those would have had the same level of mineralization. Is this what we see? pre and trilobites are nearly all minerals. Dinosaur fossils contain a moderate amount of minerals, and human and early hominid fo fossils contain nearly no minerals at all. This relative dating method still holds to the evolutionary model, so no, no hope for Noah there. The way fossils were found are no hope for Noah either. We found Cambrian animals with only Cambrian strata. Sorry, no Precambrian bunnies. Dinosaurs and only certain strata and mammals in the upper layers. They try to explain this by the way of uh, hydrodynamic sorting and the level of buoyancy. Brachiopods are very uh, similar to clams in size and shape, but brachiopods are found mostly in the lower strata than clams. And yet clams are found everywhere in the strata. Some creatures are found in small thin layers, while others are found in broad layers. Which you, ex you would expect to find elephants and dinosaurs uh, together but not in this case. Some try to say it's the ability to outrun the flood. But we still find injured dinosaurs with their brethren. Yet you would still expect to find elephants and dinosaurs together anyways. And why don't immobile things like modern plants show up with the primitive plants? There are at least eight papers I can suggest that show there are uh, there exists non catastrophic conditions to have fossilization. I will repost these in the description box so you don't need to worry about copying them down here. So Noah's flood can explain uh, why we have fossils, why we have a relative mineralization that still confirms the evolutionary model, and why only certain fossils can only be found in certain strata. Noah's flood is completely owned just by fossils, but it gets worse from here. Fossils means trace fossils. These are the result of uh, living animals. This includes burrows, footprints, feeding marks, trails, fossilized droppings, and fossilized roots. For this, I'll also include raindrops, barbs, and polar reefs. If naturally these couldn't occur during the flood, such fossils would have been before and after the flood. Unfortunately, they are found everywhere in the geological column. One of the most devastating evidences come from the Talk Origins archive. The Hayman beds consist of 15,000 alternating layers of sand and shale. The sands have several characteristics, sedimentary, sedimentary features, which are focused on turbinite deposit. Turbinites are deep water deposits in which each sand layer is deposited by a brief period of time by submarine landslide. I am trying to avoid uh, jargon here and the shale covering deposits over a long period of time. I made a comment that one of the features deposits made in this excellent argument for old earth and local flood. Early F. McBride uh, writes, two-thirds of the hammock is composed of repetitious alternating fine and very fine grained olive brown sandstone and black shale in beds of from a millimeter to five centimeters thick. The forma formation is estimated to have more than 15,000 sandstone beds greater than five millimeters thick. Two marked casts, flute casts, and flute lunination casts are common 
current fur of formed soil marks. Trace fossils in the form of sand-filled burrows are present in every sandstone soil, but nearly absent within sandstone beds. For the non-geologist who is reading this, this means the burrows and the shales, which take a long time to be deposited, so the animals would have lots of time to dig their burrows. Sandstones are catastrophic deposits with the recovers and fills of the burrows within the sand. The fact that there are no burrows in the sand proves that the sand was deposited rapidly. I pointed out if that all this sedimentary record has been deposited in a year-long flood of Noah, then it is given that the entire geological column in this area is 5,000 meters thick, and the Hayman beds are 1,300 meters thick. 1,300 divided by 5,000 uh, times 365 equals 95 days for the Hayman beds to be deposited. Since there are 15,000 of these layers, then 15,000 divided 95 days, that's 157 layers per day that needs to be deposited. The problem that the animals which have made the burrows mentioned above need some time to recolonize and reborrow the shale. It is really reasonable to believe that 157 times per day, or 6.5 times per hour, for all the burrows to be buried, killed, a new group to colonize above them, for the process to be repeated, even allowing for a daily cycle, it would require 41 years for this deposit to be laid down. Wow, Noah's blood was really owned by that one, wasn't it? Let's get to limestone. Limestone is one of the major sediments in the geological record. It takes nearly 10% of the geological record. The formation of limestone comes from living organisms. It can come from coral reefs, seashells, like from clams and platonic tests. That is a lot of dead animals. It's so nearly impossible to think that all the animals necessary for this actually lived at one time. This gives credence to great time periods rather than plentiful pre-flood world. Then there's the problem with the formation of limestone. Limestone produces an exothermic reaction. It gives off heat. Even if just 10% of the limestone were to form, it would still produce 5.6 times 10 to the 26 power joules of heat that would be enough to boil the flood waters. Poached ark, anyone? And of course, how would you get pure limestone without mixing it? This requires the coral and shells to deposit and overlay them with sediment. This is a slow process and cannot be done by a catastrophic flood. And pure limestone causes problems with dull stone. Since pure limestone is damn near impenetrable, it nearly takes a long time for the uh, magnesium to replace the calcium. But of course, if you don't have limestone, you don't have dull stone.